Welcome to Make a Healthcare Plan with the Getting Started Toolkit. This is our series of do-it-yourself videos. You are here at Step 1, How to Choose a Healthcare Agent, Part A. In Step 1, we're going to choose a healthcare agent in a healthcare proxy. So please note that Step 1 is broken down into two parts, Part A and Part B. In Part A, we're going to focus on how to choose an agent, and in Part B, we'll focus on how to fill out your healthcare proxy to appoint your healthcare agent. So in this video, we will review what an agent does, who you can choose, and what you should talk about with your agent. It's your healthcare and your choice. You have a powerful civil right to make your own healthcare choices and to direct your care. So before we start to make a plan, just take a minute to think about what's right for you. Reflect on your values, your beliefs, your cultural traditions. What shapes your care decisions? You may want to talk to your doctors to find out more about your medical condition and what's ahead for you. You also have a powerful right to information in Massachusetts, and we need information sometimes in order to make care choices. You may also want to talk to your family and friends about what's important to you and the kind of care you want. It's your health care and your choice. One of the first decisions you may want to make is choosing a health care agent in a health care proxy. Massachusetts law actually makes this easy for us to understand. The person you choose, that person is called your health care agent, or your agent for short. You give your agent the power to make decisions in a legal document called a health care proxy. So your agent's the person, your proxy's the document. In Massachusetts, this is how we pass our very powerful right to make decisions to another person, to your health care agent. So that means your family member or a spouse doesn't automatically have this powerful decision-making right unless you appoint them as your health care agent in a health care proxy. Let's talk about your agent. Accidents and injuries can happen at any time, at any age. It's just part of life. So if you get sick or injured and you're not able to talk to your doctors, to hear about your treatment options, and to make decisions for yourself, even for a short while, you need someone who can step in, talk with your doctors, and make those decisions to get you the care you would want. You need an advocate. That's your healthcare agent. Your agent helps you get the best possible care all through your lifetime. You have a right to choose a healthcare agent starting at 18 years old. So if you're sick or injured and you're not able to make those decisions for yourself, your agent steps in. Sometimes when you're perfectly healthy and you've had an accident and you're in the emergency department, well, that's when your agent can step in and help you recover. And as you age, we may need surgeries or more long-term care, and your agent is there to help you to get the best quality care. And if you're living with serious illness and unable to make decisions for yourself, your agent is there to make sure your family and your doctors know and honor your end-of-life care choices. So what does your agent do? First, it's important to note that in Massachusetts, your agent steps in when your doctor determines that you're not able to make decisions for yourself. It's a medical decision. And it just may be for a little while until you recover, or it may be longer, depending on that medical condition. So your agent steps in with the power to talk to your doctors, to learn about your illness and what your treatment options are. They can ask questions to understand the benefits and risks of those treatments. They can look at your medical records and your tests. And then they'll talk to your family and to your doctors about you and your choices. And in that way, your doctors can make recommendations that really match the best care to your values and choices. So your agent makes those care decisions based on what you want, not what that agent might want or another family member might want. Your agent is your advocate and makes sure everyone honors your choices. And then your agent steps back when you're able to make decisions for yourself. Then you have the power to direct your care. Who can be an agent? Well, again, Massachusetts law makes this easy. It really can be anybody, any competent adult, 18 years and older, you trust. Your mother, your daughter, a nephew, an uncle, maybe a, perhaps a neighbor or a co-worker, or someone in your faith community or community group. 
it's your choice, but not a person who works at a place where you are a patient, like a doctor in a hospital or a care provider at a nursing facility where you're a patient, unless that person is related to you by blood, marriage, or adoption. What should we talk about is always a question we hear a lot. Well, your agent's main job is to make the decisions that you would want if you were able to speak for yourself. So it's not really what your agent would want or another family member would want. So in order to do that, your agent's going to need some information from you in order to know how to make decisions. So you want to talk about who you are, your values, your beliefs, your traditions. What do you want them to consider if you get sick? And what's most important to you, especially while you're trying to recover? Your agent may be faced with some really difficult and complex decisions as we age. So you want to let them know about your, the kind of care you want and the kind of care you don't want, especially around end-of-life care treatments. You may stop and ask, what information would you like from me? And if this feels like a good fit to you, then ask, would you like to be my agent? We've made this easy for you to do in the personal directive. It actually sets up a set of questions and a great discussion guide for you and your agent. Just go to step two and download the personal directive. It's best to choose an agent and an alternate agent. Your alternate agent is your backup agent. If your agent's not available, your alternate agent steps in with that same power as the agent to get you good care. Now, sometimes it's hard to identify an alternate agent. That's okay. You don't have to choose one in order to sign a healthcare proxy, but it's a good idea if you can. So now that your trusted person has agreed to be your agent, now it's time to give the agent the power to make decisions by appointing them in a healthcare proxy. This is the Honoring Choices Healthcare Proxy, which you can do yourself. We'll talk more about how to fill that out in step one, how to fill out your proxy, that's part B. Or if you're not sure who your healthcare agent is yet, no problem. You just want to follow steps two and three to make your plan.